The banking industry is surrounded by so many conspiracies that sometimes it's quite difficult to separate the facts from fiction, starting from Rothschild's banking dynasty to JP Morgan. If the Rothschild's banking empire has shrunk dramatically in recent decades, JP Morgan's banking empire only expanded to the point as of 2019, it has $3 trillion in assets under management, while its investment and corporate arm holds $25.5 trillion in assets under custody. In fact, it was JP Morgan himself who pushed the government to create the Federal Reserve, the center of all modern conspiracies. For over a hundred years, JP Morgan has been in the center of American banking. In this video, we are going to take a look at how JP Morgan created the world's largest bank and how he ended up also convincing the government to create the Fed. It all started in 1837 in Hartford, Connecticut, where John Pierpont Morgan was born. John joined the banking industry just when he hit 20 after coming back from Europe in 1857. Following his father's footsteps, his father J.S. Morgan had already established the merchant banking firm, Peabody Morgan & Co. Back then, the United States wasn't the superpower that it's today, it was more like an emerging market. So the Europeans were investing heavily in the United States since returns were quite high, especially in the railroad. It was like the internet of that time. Everyone thought that the railroads are the future and no one dared to miss this opportunity. But Morgan was smart enough not to invest his own money because he knew that it was turning into a bubble and everything would crash at any moment, as we will see later in this video. However, that didn't stop him from funneling European investments through American companies into the railroad. He even got personally involved in the development and the management of the railroads across the nation. Morgan was a big believer in big corporations because they enable economies of scale and make them more competitive. So his vision was to always merge multiple small businesses and turn them into a conglomerate. In 1890, he took control of J.S. Morgan & Co. His vision was to buy Carnegie's steel business and merge it with several other steel, coal, mining and shipping firms and form the United States Steel Corporation. It became the first billion dollar company in the world with a market cap of $1.4 billion. With economies of scale, they reduced their costs and started competing globally against Europeans. His influence was beyond steel and railroad, although that they were the two biggest industries of that time. He also played an important role and helped to merge Edison Electric with its competitors that ended up becoming General Electric. His vision was always the bigger the company, the bigger economies of scale it can achieve. He also helped to create AT&T and multiple other companies. It seems like it was JP Morgan who rooted the idea of the giant corporations in the United States. But that's exactly what made JP Morgan one of the most powerful banking houses of the world by 1900. Morgan reorganized the business's structures and management to return them to profitability. His reputation as a banker also helped him bring investors on board to the businesses that he took over. However, not everything was sunshine and rainbows. Remember the crisis I told you about in the beginning? Well, after multiple decades of dramatic growth, the bubble finally burst and the stock market crashed like it always does. It ripped the American economy. Even the major banks were on the verge of bankruptcy. The banks tried to get their loans back, but the firms simply weren't able to pay and the United States didn't have a central bank at that time to rescue them. So Morgan stepped in and saved the economy. He pledged a large sum of his own money and convinced other major New York bankers to do the same. If it wasn't for him, the crisis would have deepened. But it illustrated the vast influence of a single banker on the entire American economy. That was a clear sign for the government to step in and take over the money supply. 
What would happen if another crisis would hit? Relying on rich guys in New York isn't always the best of the options. That's when the US decided to create a central bank, and in 1913, the Federal Reserve was born, just a few months after JP Morgan passed away. But that didn't stop JP Morgan Company from growing even bigger. It played an important role in World War I. However, when the war came to an end, financial crisis hit the world again. The Great Depression lasted almost 10 years, and the Congress took any measures to save the economy, and part of it was to pass the Banking Act of 1933 that separated commercial banks from investment banks. That forced JP Morgan and company to break up. However, for JP Morgan to become as big and powerful as it's today, it had to merge with multiple other banks throughout the century. The most notable of them is probably Chase Manhattan Bank, that was already a merger of two other big banks, Chase National Bank and Bank of the Manhattan Company, that was founded back in 1799, one of the oldest financial institutions in the history of the United States. Another bank that also created a fierce competition was Chemical Bank Corporation. The name sounds quite unusual for a bank. It was initially a chemical manufacturing company back when it was founded in 1823. However, just a year after that, it got into the banking sector. After more than a century, in the 1980s and 90s, it was at the front of the industry. Remember, Chase Manhattan Bank, despite its successes, it was extremely weakened by a real estate collapse, so it merged with Chemical Bank in 1996 and became the biggest bank in the entire nation. The marriage of the biggest banks in America didn't stop there. The competition was fierce, and Chase Manhattan Bank had to find ways to compete with Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley. So in December of 2000, the two giant financial institutions merged, Chase Manhattan and JP Morgan, to become the largest bank in America, JP Morgan Chase & Co. It might seem like that would be the end of mergers and these banks would finally stop expanding. However, that wasn't the case. In 2004, JP Morgan purchased Chicago-based Bank One Corporation for $58 billion in stocks, bringing on board Jamie Dimon, who would end up becoming the CEO and take the company to where it's now. Despite the fact that JP Morgan was powerful enough to save the nation from the panic in 1907, the bank and its current structure is the result of combination of several large US banks. Like in 1907, the world was hit by another crisis. In 2008, the stock market crashed again, but this time, the crisis was much bigger. Companies went bankrupt one after another, including conglomerates such as Lehman Brothers. The fifth largest bank in the United States, Beer Stearns, lost almost half of its value and was on the verge of bankruptcy. Unlike 1907, this time there was a central bank to save the economy, and JP Morgan Chase took full advantage of that. To prevent the collapse of such a giant bank, the government rescued Beer Stearns by lending $29 billion to JP Morgan Chase to buy the firm. They tried to purchase the bank for around $230 million, valuing each share at only $2, when it was valued above 100 bucks just before the crisis. But it didn't work out, so they ended up paying $10 a share. And JP Morgan came out of the crisis only bigger and stronger. JP Morgan isn't without controversies. They were involved in multiple scandals. They paid over $2 billion in fines and legal settlements for their role in financing and run corporate fraudulent securities. In fact, they also ended up paying another $2.2 billion to settle a lawsuit filed by Enron investors. The number of controversies and lawsuits that it went through is beyond what we can possibly cover in this video. But JP Morgan Chase is probably exactly how JP Morgan himself envisioned the company. He was a big supporter of mergers, and the company consistently merged or purchased other banks to be where they are today. And now it's your turn. What do you think? Should the banks be allowed to keep merging and get bigger? 
or the government should intervene and stop them? Let me know in the comments below. And anyways, hit the like button if you have enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.